Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're gonna be solving an interesting problem with complex numbers. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out cyber math, cyber with an S. Great, so we have this equation. The first equation is given to us, right? Cyber math not included in this. Okay, and then we're supposed to evaluate this. So how do you evaluate z to the 11th power? Easy, we just solve the equation. Let's call that the first method. z squared plus 2z plus 2 equals 0. Now there's a couple different ways to solve this equation. It's quadratic. You can use the formula. You can try factoring. Factoring is not going to work. Well, it kind of does if you use the what's called Poisson Lowe's method, and I made a video about it, I think. It's actually, it wasn't discovered by him. It was discovered way earlier because you can use Vieta's formulas, but that's a different story. And or uh, you can complete the square, which is method, which is a method that I really like. So let's go ahead and do that. First, subtract two from both sides to isolate the constant, and then add one to both sides. And the reason why we're adding one is that'll make the left-hand side a perfect square. And the reason behind that is if you take the coefficient of z, which is two, and cut that in half and square, you're gonna get one. So one is the magic number here. If you add it to both sides, the left-hand side is gonna be a perfect square. So that gives us z plus one quantity squared, and on the right-hand side, we have negative one. Uh-oh, no real number squared cannot be negative. So z plus one is not real. Well, isn't this channel all about complex numbers? Absolutely, and complex numbers, by the way, also contain the set of real numbers, but usually we call them real numbers when they're real, and when they're not, you can also call them non-real complex, okay? But let's see how we can solve this. We need to square with both sides. And the square root of negative one is, oops, I forgot to say that. The square root of negative one is i because i squared is negative one. That's how we define it. So z plus one is gonna be i, but there's another number whose square equals negative one, which is negative i. It's actually, negative one has two square roots, but i is the square root, which is the principal square root. That's why I said the square root, okay? So this is gonna be plus minus i, because when you square, you get negative one either case. And now we're gonna subtract one from both sides or add negative one. And this is gonna give us the solutions. Case closed? Not really, because you're supposed to evaluate ta -da, da da z to the 11 plus z to the power of negative 11. Well, z to the power of negative 11 is no big deal. Once we can evaluate this, we just have to find the reciprocal, right? Because this can be written as follows. z to the power 11 plus z to the power negative 11 can be written as z to the power 11 plus one over z to the power 11. So if you know what this is, you know what this is, so you know what this is. And then you know the whole thing, makes sense? Okay, so let's see how we can go to that from here. This is the first method, remember, so it's a little bit painful, okay? No pain, no gain. So let's go ahead and use this one the one with the plus sign, which I like better. And now we need to evaluate z to the power 11. And one can easily do this, right? Take that and raise it to the 11th power. But that's super painful, don't you think? I mean, come on. Using the binomial theorem, you're going to have 12 terms. So you're going to expand a plus b to the 11th power. 11 choose 0, 11 choose 1. Combinatorial coefficients. They're going to get really big. And guess what? When you did the reciprocal, you're gonna get another gigantic expression. You have to add them. Something should cancel out, don't you think? I mean, this problem was probably asked on one of these, I don't know, math contests, math competition, Olympiad, whatever. Same type, because most problems on my channel are that way. So that should be an easy way to look at it. So here's what you can do. If you know that when, I, when you take one minus i and square it, you get one plus i squared plus minus 2i, i squared is negative 1, so these two are going to cancel out. We get an imaginary number, a complex number with no real part. What am I talking about? A complex number can be written as a plus bi, and a is the real part, b is the imaginary part. Does not include i, by the way. They're both real numbers, but b is the imaginary part. And this number does not have a real part. Okay, a equals 0 in other words. Make sense? So what does this have to do with that? Well, they're opposites. So if you square this number, you're going to get 2i because their squares are equal, obviously. I mean negative 2i, that's what I meant, I guess. And then 
you can square it one more time, right? So the fourth power is just going to be this number squared, which is 4i squared, which is negative 4. Awesome. And you can still square that one more time, which gives you the eighth power. And that'll be negative 4 squared. And that'll be 16. So that's a real number. Good. But I need the 11th power. Hmm. To get to the 11th, I need the cube. So what I can do is maybe to get the cube of this number, I can take the square of that number and multiply by the number. Make sense? This is first power. This is second power. 2 plus 1 equals 3. It's as easy as that. And we already know this is negative 2i. So all you have to do is use distributive property. And negative 1 plus i to the third power is going to give you 2i, because you're distributing, minus 2i squared. And guess what? i squared is negative 1. So it's going to be plus 2. Therefore, you can write it as 2 plus 2i. Beautiful. But what does that have to do with the problem? Well, we have the eighth power and we have the third power. To get the eleventh power, we can go ahead and multiply those. Yay! Now let's go ahead and multiply these together because negative one plus i to the eighth power times negative one plus i to the third power is going to give us negative one plus i to the eleventh power. And then we need to find the reciprocal, which is easy to do. And where does that come from? It comes from z. Remember, z was this number. We are raising it to the 11th power. And then we're going to find this reciprocal and add them. Okay? So, let's go ahead and see how this goes. The 8th power was 16, which is a real number. The 3rd power was 2 plus 2i. So, this is going to be 32 plus 32i. So, in essence, I'm basically adding these two things. 32 plus 32i plus 1 over 32 plus 32i. And this should be somewhat easy. You don't have to multiply by 32 minus 32i. I mean, you could, but there's actually a kind of like a nicer way to approach it. Maybe factor out a 32 and write it this way. And now you can use a complex conjugate, right? Multiply by 1 minus i. And remember that these two will give you a 2, a squared plus b squared, right? And then this will be 64. So you're going to get something like this, right? 1 minus i divided by 64. And then you'll make a common denominator. Uh-oh, that's not good, but easy. 32 times 32 is 1024 because I know it's 2 to the 10th power. Just double that, you're going to get 2048. So this will give us 2048 plus 192 i plus 1 minus i all over 64. If you simplify this, you should be getting 2049 plus 191i divided by 64. And if you want to write it in the standard form, the answer should be something like this. I hope you like that. It doesn't look very nice, but hey, it's simple enough, right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think you're going to like the second method, okay? So, the first method gave us a good way to approach it, but uh, I think second method you're going to like better. But again, it's up to you. Now, I do need this. To get that, I kind of need to work with the highest power. So, polynomial way, okay? So, let's isolate z squared, all right? And then from here, we're going to evaluate 11th power. But again, we're going to use something similar, by the way. We're going to square both sides first. Okay. And by the way, this is the same as this. So you can just think of it that way, which is easier to do. And that'll be 4z squared plus 8z plus 4. And now z squared can be replaced with this. Right. So that'll give us 4 times negative 2z minus 2 plus 8z plus 4, that gives us z to the fourth equals this, negative 8z and 8z cancel out, negative 8 plus 4 is going to give us negative 4. So z to the fourth is negative 4. Let's see if we found something similar with the first method. Did we? Well, when we raised fourth power, notice we also get negative 4, but in an easier way, much easier, because here we don't have to worry about the value of z, but we're just trying to write z powers of z in terms of the, in other words, as a linear function, okay? 
and this is a linear function too. And then it proceeds the same way, z to the eighth is just gonna be 16 because you have to square this. To find z to the third, I can either cube z directly or uh, you can, you know, z cubed is z squared times z. Wait, wait a minute, I can't cube it because I don't know what z is. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply z, which is, I'm sorry, multiply z squared by z, which will give us negative 2z squared minus 2z, 2z or not 2z, that's the problem. <laughs> sorry, I had to say that. And now z squared will be replaced with the thing one more time, which is negative 2z minus 2. And then if you simplify this, you're going to get z cubed equals negative 4z minus 2z, I mean, sorry, positive 4z minus 2z, which is 2z plus 4. So we were able to write z cubed as a linear function, z to the eighth as a linear function, or just a constant. Now we're going to be able to multiply them to find z to the 11th, which is z to the eighth times z to the third. z to the eighth is 16, remember? And this is just z to the third. If you multiply them, z to the 11th is going to be 32z plus 64. Does that look familiar? Hopefully. And then you're going to plug it in and so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath, NA plus BI, and bye-bye.